the biggest financial comeback in history. It may as well be an amazing story here coming up, guys. But first, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Follow along. And let's get right into it. Today, talking about one of the biggest financial comebacks in history. From Iceland's own Thor Bjorgolfsson. I could be butchering that name. Hopefully not. He was the richest man in Iceland and he was in the top 250 richest people in the world um, and it took him less than 10 years to become a billionaire from basically you know zero to a billion which is uh, unbelievable but this day and age just seems like it keeps on um, you know the time period becomes shorter and shorter to become you know richer and richer and so he became uh, the richest man in Iceland through multiple businesses, but the main was um, the major bank in Iceland, which he was the biggest shareholder. And he basically was guaranteeing big um, high interest rates to people lending money. And then the financial crisis was starting to have, uh, in 2008, having some, some cracks or whatever and they couldn't sustain the business. So the government ended up taking over the bank and he basically went, at that time, he had 3.5 billion to absolutely zero and even into the negative. And I can't even imagine something like that. Like for me, a few hundred thousand dollars to zero would, would feel just the same, but it's unbelievable to lose everything of that much because what I believe in is to make a ton of money so you ha you have a lot of room to to mess up and to take losses or whatever and it went to zero though and Iceland Icelandic people were so upset with him they wanted they were you know vandalizing his house in Iceland and and all that and he basically just wanted to you know, hide behind a rock and wait until the, the whole crisis was over because taking that loss alone, you know, your whole life is upside down, obviously. And and then your whole country almost hates you and wants you to be, you know, destroyed. So very, very tough circumstance to come out of. But what he did was he immediately jumped, you know, right back into it. He took the heat, all the pressure everyone was putting on to him. He started to, you know, try to get right back on the horse right away. He started to invest and and buy businesses and get into it, however he did it. And in less than eight years from that time he lost everything, he became a billionaire once again. And I think that is the most amazing story to come back. And what I realize is... You know, he did it in about 10 years the first time to make a billion, but then he did it in under eight where it always gets shorter the time period for yourself personally to make back the same amount of money you did before. So if you end up losing everything, just know it's going to be most likely a shorter time to get that back. You're going to be more advanced, more educated and execute better. At least you should be. So he did it. He came back billionaire once again on top of the world. And that is the main lesson to come back from financial uh, disaster is to get right back in the game. The faster you get into it, it's the only way to do it. You're going to have to do that instead of taking a two year, you know, break period of remorse and, you know, getting over all these emotions, you need to jump right back into it. And that's exactly what a strong person does, an entrepreneur does. It's all about, it's not about like, you know, taking the hits it's about taking the hits and getting back in in the game and 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 you know not stopping so um that's it guys you got to jump right back into the game no matter what your your losses are you got to get back right into it most likely again you're going to find something that's even better even more lucrative and it's only a, a better for your legacy it's gonna, like this guy has such a legacy it was it was cool when he was a billionaire but now he lost a billion and made it back He's always going to be remembered. So um, it's an amazing thing. And another thing what he did here, which is uh, interesting, 
is both times he made his money is he over leveraged. He went highly, highly risky of borrowing a ton of money and putting into uh, something he believed in. You know, over leveraging is a problem, obviously, just like what happened here with him at the time he lost the billion. But what I realize is, at least in my opinion, is you want to be in, you know, less vehicles. You want to be in like one or two vehicles that you know really well that you, your heart and your intellect knows inside and out and then go all in on that one instead of you know trying to like you know know 10 different vehicles of investments or businesses to be involved with trying to manage and understand all those businesses is very difficult you know you don't know it's good to know something and watch it and then wait to execute and when it comes up you execute 1000% without hesitation so I think leverage going all in there's some benefit to it that's a lot of people make you know big fortunes and then um you know going in on maybe one thing in life so um it, it sounds risky and a problem but i think it's uh you know it it could work definitely but money's money you know you got to take risk and you got to know I, another thing another lesson in all this is things usually don't work out unless you're willing to lose everything and that's why i feel like when you if you do do your one investment or your one business and you give it your heart, something that can expand and grow, um, it works out often because you know you're risking, you know if this doesn't work out, it's start from scratch, but you need to be in that feeling of fearlessness to wanting to lose everything because then if you're, fear, if you're fearing it, then you're gonna, when you have to execute even on those projects, you're gonna hesitate on things and you're gonna make incorrect decisions it's going to put you down the path of meteorocracy and, and eventually you're going to fail you got to be on heavy offense to to dominate to and not even to dominate to just be in the market and in the industry in any business or whatever you will be destroyed everything that comes up goes down everything will die out eventually and if you're not like trying to dominate and be offensive and own your market not even just yourself the business you're invested in or whatever it's going to die out. Your competitors are going to take over and, and you're going to be, you know, either dying or bought out or, or whatever it is. So some things to keep in mind there, guys. One of the biggest financial comebacks in history here. And I'm going to be doing more videos on this on, you know, famous people and just regular storied people of, you know, big financial comebacks and, you know, related stories like that. So let me know in the comment sections if you like this video. If you'd like to see more of those, make sure again to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next one.